show for you tonight. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, you know, there's a deep connection between New Orleans and the Caribbean. It's like a little Creole, you know? Nowhere does that show up better than in the food. It's because of this connection that we have dishes like fried okra, gumbo, sweet potato pie. So tonight, you're going to get a little taste of what I get to enjoy at home in New Orleans. And speaking about being connected, we got Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band in the house. Hey, it pays to be connected. It's the New Orleans Caribbean Connection right here on Emerald Live. Big, big show for you tonight. Big, big show. Doc, how you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good, man. Guys, how you doing? Everybody's uh, oh, yeah. Caribbean, New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Got that little Creole vibe going right now oh, in the step. Uh -huh. It's all in that step. Oh, you know? that oh step. man. <laughs> I'm not going to go there right now. Hey, would you like to know what's on the menu tonight? Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Fancy stuff. What do you think about the new digs, huh? Well, they're new to us, at least. We're going to do a little Haitian cremise. We're going to start off with that. It's really a drink. It's a rum drink. Figured, why not? Just, why not? Let's start. Let's everybody get happy, right? One of my favorite things in the world, fried okra, and we're going to do that with a tomato marmalade. And then uh, we're going to have sort of a little bean cook-off here. We're going to do uh, a little duo of beans. What we're going to do on this side over here, we're going to do a Caribbean beans and rice. And on this side, we're going to do a little New Orleans red beans and rice. Oh, man. Yeah. So we'll have a little bean. And then another Haitian sweet potato. Oh, wait till you see this. It's unbelievable. Where am I going? I don't know. We're going to figure it out, though, Doc. I'm ready. You ready for the haul? Yes. Why well, don't me show you this cremise drink here. Here's what we're going to do. Check it out. First, we start with some, uh, which they use a lot of, some evaporated milk. You know, that condensed milk stuff, not evaporated. Condensed. The stuff that you can put the can in the water and two hours you got a pudding. Is, you know what I mean, Doc? Oh, yeah. So we want to get all of that in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got that. Then, some coconut milk. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, and then we got to have a little bit of vanilla. Mm. Oops. And then a little nutmeg. Mm. That wasn't so bad, right? Easy. Now... Put some ice cubes in here to get it nice and chilled. Have you had one of these, Doc? Not yet. <laughs> We're working on it. All right. So, now, they have two different types of rum. You know, they drink a lot of rum down there in the rum. Caribbean. So this is a coconut-flavored rum, okay? Used for some different drinks. Put a little bit of that in there. And then, of course, you got Doc rum, Pale rum, we'll add a little of that in there too. So, the hottest pot, after you've made a few batches of these, Doc, right. is getting the blender to work. <laughs> so we're gonna start real slow. I, I put it on that slow thing first because we don't want to like, right. you know. Oh. Oh yeah, you can feel it right now. Then you can give it a high shot. That's a low shot. 
How about a rim shot? Good. Now, you take this in this little cordial glass like this. Oh, oh yes. Man. And then you get a little cordial glass like this. Good, you guys have a little toast, you know, just welcome them real life, you know? <laughs> there you have it, there's a little grimace. When we come back, we're gonna start cooking. Don't even think about touching that dial. Not yet. Caribbean Connection tonight, and I want to uh, get started right on this next dish I'm really quite excited about. I want to, uh, I'm going to talk about okra, but before I do that, what I want to serve this okra with is a little tomato marmalade. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I've got some beautiful tomatoes that, uh, you know, it's that kind of season right now. So uh, we're going to just start with a little bit of olive oil, just to sort of get that, oh, and um, then what we're going to do is start with a little onion. And we're going to add that first layer of little salt there. Some fresh ground pepper. Now, once we get a little flavor out of that oven onion, what we're going to do now is we're going to add the tomatoes that we just... And I'm using these sort of ripe Roma tomatoes, you know, those little ones that sort of almost oval kind of shape. They're good for like this kind of stuff, the sauces. Now, next thing we're going to add is obviously a little garlic in here to just kind of pick it up a little. And uh, once that gets going here, a couple minutes. We're going to add a little bit of tomato paste. A lot of people, you know, they use tomato paste. They don't even know why they're using it. They just, I don't know, it's one of those things. You know, maybe it's just generation after generation. But basically, tomato paste is used to give it some structure in the sauce. So you got tomatoes, you got little juice, you got, maybe it's pureed, maybe it's those tomatoes that you're going to squish and put it in there, but... To sort of bring it in together, you gotta have a little, a little tomato paste. That's sort of like the body, if you will. So we're gonna add just a little bit of that because what we need to keep it together with is this. Now we're gonna add some orange juice and a little brown sugar. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna add some acidity to this. So we're gonna add a little red wine vinegar and I figured, why not add the popular vinegar out there right now, a little balsamic vinegar. So you got sweet, you got acidity. Sweet, acidity. All right, now for some spices. And uh, bay leaf used very much in Caribbean New Orleans cooking from the laurel tree. See, we want to work that paste in there a little bit, get that body going. Orange peel lot of citrus peel used, as well as red pepper, cinnamon, and allspice. All right, so we're going to get that going here. Turn up the heat. Once the heat, and this comes up to a boil, then what we're going to do is we're going to lower it and just start letting it simmer and cook. Just get happy, happy. Now, let's talk about okra. This is okra here. We actually have, uh, we're fortunate to have two different types of okra. A pot okra from the Caribbean and the more traditional one, green, used in New Orleans. 
They kind of, if you ever see them grow, they grow in these long, long, long pods that just go way up in the air, and then they just sort of stick there, and they're really, really wonderful. And uh, it's one of those things in the Caribbean, New Orleans culture and its food that really came over from Africa. And the uh, African uh, customs and culture use okra for all kinds of things, most famously for okra gumbo, okay, which I absolutely love. Now, a lot of people are confused, but I'm not going to go there, that if you don't have okra in the gumbo, it's not really gumbo. And that's not true. Because if you have okra in the gumbo, it would be okra gumbo. It could be shrimp and okra gumbo, oyster okra gumbo, but it doesn't have to have gum okra in there to be gumbo. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. <laughs> Simple, right? Yeah. So, basically what people are afraid of is that they, they think that there's some slime. Like when you... Now, I don't see slime. <laughs> now, if you have a bad knife, and if you don't sharply cut the okra, and you bruise it, ah. you could get slime. The slime. Right. Right. <laughs> well, go get some okra and try it. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is this. We're going to bread this okra and we're going to fry it in vegetable oil while our tomato marmalade is going on. And how we're going to do that, I like to marinate them. And I do that with a couple of eggs and some buttermilk. Whisk that really, really good. And generally, this takes about 30 minutes. You get some hot sauce. Oh, yeah, babe, and you just sort of add a little hot sauce in here. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then you take what okra you want marinated put it right inside of there in the refrigerator it goes 30 minutes now this has literally been about 30 minutes now it's time to fry them, and it's very, very simple at this point. I use half flour and half cornmeal, okay? I mix this up, but as you can see, it's not seasoned. So we're going to add a little essence in here. And then we're going to take our marinated okra out now, dredge it in the flour cornmeal, Fry it 360, 370 degrees. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Stick around, Doc Gates! Emerald Lagasse here. A little Caribbean New Orleans connection building in the air. And uh, we fried up some okra. We marinated them. Good 30 minutes is fantastic in that buttermilk hot sauce. Mm. Oh, yeah, a couple of eggs. And then uh, you want to make sure that the oil is at least 360, but not over really 380, okay? If it's too low, that's when you get bad frying. Too high, that's not good either because the outside cooks, the inside's probably not cooked. But as I said a million times, when frying, that's when you want to be sure that you season it when it comes out of the hot oil. See, it's vulnerable right now. <laughs> it's just waiting, you know? So that's when we come around and 
Okay, so we got fried okra. Oh, so excited. Sometimes, oh, wait, wait, oh. Sometimes uh, you can do a little fried okra salad. It's fantastic. You take some greens, do a little uh, dressing with uh, a little perno inside of it or herb saint, real light in the greens, fried okra. Huh. Or as we're going to do this sort of little Caribbean Creole New Orleans. See, you don't have to cook the marmalade that long. You don't have to do anything really fancy to it either. You just can put some of that marmalade like on a little plate like this. If you want to puree it, puree it. You're not going to bother me. <laughs> I just put a little heaping pile like that on there of that tomato. And then uh, I take my okra and just sort of put them on the outside like this in little stacks. Oh, yeah, baby. See, in little stacks like that there. And then uh, you can go around and stop frying them. You like okra, Doc? Love it, man. Well, you know, let me tell you, I know that you are uh, you go home and cook on the weekends, and I know you were cooking like uh, nobody's uh, business last weekend. Didn't invite me either, but that's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, we're buddies Monday through Friday. That's all right, pal. <laughs> So, at least I'm going to share with you. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. No. oh, man, thank you. <laughs> there you have it, folks, a little fried okra. <laughs> I got two different styles of Dutch ovens on here. I got the orange one. And that's going to be the New Orleans red beans. And then I've got the Caribbean beans that I'm going to do in the blue one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start here with a little bit of uh, just plain olive oil, both ones. You're going to see how similarities here in a lot of the uh, cooking technique and some of the ingredients overlap. First one, uh, the Caribbean one here, we're going to take some pork fat. Oh, yeah, baby. And we're going to start rendering that out in that skillet there. Now, in the New Orleans side, we're going to have some oil, except we're going to start with the Trinity. And that would be onions. Celery, bell pepper. See, and I've got green and red bell pepper. Because we got a really, really big budget here tonight. <laughs> so, we're going to start with that. And then, the seasoning generally used in Creole and Acadian cooking is simple. There's a little salt and a little cayenne pepper. That's generally the basic seasonings that they have. Now, when this Trinity cooks for about six or eight minutes, I'm gonna add about 40 cloves of garlic in here. And then, and then I'm gonna add some diced ham, and I'm gonna add some andouille sausage in the New Orleans side over here. Over here, once the pork fat starts getting a little crispy, I'm going to add onions, shallots, green onions, and garlic. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, when we come back, another notch!
joining us, Emma Lagasse here, cooking from, oh, a little New Orleans Caribbean connection, speaking about the connection. Give it up for Mr. Cliff on the keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. And Lois is on horns. Our good friend, Sir Charles, on the bass. Mr. Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you. My friend and yours, Doc Gibbs, in the house. All right. So we're back on the Caribbean side over here, and that, uh, that pork fat is crispy and, oh, happy. Now... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the onions to this and some shallot. If you don't have shallot, you could use red onions. We've soaked some beans and then I'm draining them. Now, we're going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of salt because we don't know how salty the pork meat is. We'll come back and re-season it. And some pepper. Meanwhile, the Trinity on the New Orleans side is looking pretty happy right now. So I'm going to show you the difference, but yet similarities of these. Once the Trinity is done, now we're going to add the 40 cloves of garlic cloves in there, you know? And I'm going to add a little thyme, a little thyme, and believe it or not, just a couple of three cloves. That clove thing is, oh yeah. So now we're getting that in here happy. And then what we're going to do is add the andouille sausage in here, the sliced andouille, and start just getting all the love out of that andouille right now. So that's what's happening. All right, back on the old Caribbean side here. Now we're going to add the green onions. And we're going to add the garlic on that side over there, okay? Now, as far as herbs, uh -huh, uh -huh. now what we're going to add is we're going to add a little bay leaf and a little bit of thyme in here, okay? And once we get some flavor going out of that, here's where the heat comes. Scotch bonnet pepper. Oh, yeah, man. Probably like the hottest pepper uh, on the planet. Hot. So... How hot? It's pretty hot. <laughs> We're going to add that in there. Oh, come on. Christmas is coming. I ain't scared of no scotch bonnet. <laughs> now, once that, I wish you could smell this, too. All right, once that gets going... We're going to flip over to the uh, New Orleans side for a second. The andouille is getting really, really happy. Now, we're going to add some ham. And some red beans. If you want to soak them, you can soak them. If not, no problem. Now, what I like to do is cook them for about a minute like this. Oh, yes. Oh. Now, while that's getting happy, we're going to go back over to the Caribbean side for a second. Now what we're going to do here, this is the interesting thing. The soaked beans, they use the reserve liquid. Hey, I don't have any problem with that. Then... Rice. Sounds good to me. Then, coconut milk. And then, the beans go in that have been soaked. We're going to get all of that nice and mixed up. Oh, look at that, huh? See, that's where they get that great color. That beans and rice. Love that stuff. All right. Now, we're going to put the lid on this. 
which you have to do to make rice. And then what we're going to do is once it comes up, we're going to turn the heat down to like medium low. Back to the New Orleans side over here. Wouldn't you just like to jump in that pot right now? How happy would you be? Pork, pork, and more pork fat. Woo! Now, we add the water. And you got to keep an eye on both of these now while they're cooking. One's got the rice in it. One doesn't have the rice in it. In New Orleans, generally this is served on Mondays. And the old uh, reason is that used to be the old laundry day. So you would put a pot of red beans on. It's going to take a couple of hours now. Comes up, going to turn that down. We're going to cook it really slow. It's that food of love thing. And the beans, as they start cooking, are eventually going to... And they release... Oh, it's, uh. And same thing here. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this up. We've got rice in here. We've got to keep an eye on the liquid because we may have to add a little water to both of them. And we're going to let this cook. When we come back, I'm going to show you New Orleans red beans and Caribbean beans and rice. Stay with us. Back in. <laughs> Creole, little New Orleans, little Caribbean connection going on right now. Let me give you a little update on where we are before uh, I show you this uh, Haitian sweet potato. Oh, before I go there. I said earlier, you got to make sure that um, you keep an eye on the water. You also got to keep an eye on when you're using like real rice. You got to keep an eye on the starch level, too, because uh, if you don't, it'll stick. A lot of people have trouble just cooking rice. So what I do, especially we got coconut milk in this, okay? And it's reducing down. See how that's starting to stick right there? Can you get a shot of that, Buck? On the sides, okay? You got to be very careful. You keep stirring this every now and then. I know you're not supposed to, the rice police tell you that you're not supposed to stir the rice. They're right outside. They're probably waiting right now. Probably getting ready to bust the doors down right now. But I'm just telling you, look, you got to you gotta every now and then stir it when you got this kind of dish going on because you got a lot of starch happening in here. And don't be afraid to, uh, to add a little bit more water to this. You know, add a little water, add a little stock, but stir it. Make sure you don't get anything sticky happening there. All right. You'll see the difference now when... We go to the New Orleans side because we don't have no rice in there. So look at that. The beans, they're just getting so happy. Oh, yeah. Surrounded by pork fat. You know, the ham and, well, I wish you could smell this. But the other thing is when you're cooking beans, right? You know, there's, a, there's some rules. They say, well, you shouldn't season your beans until after they cook. And then there's another school that says, no, you have to season them at least a little bit, and then you come back and re-season them. That's the school that I would be from. Yeah. Because if you wait to the end, wouldn't it be too late? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so, too. <laughs> but maybe we're just from the same grandmother or something, you know? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we got the bean thing going on right now. Now let me show you. This is a really, really unique sweet potato, as in, well, you could make a pie with it. Here's what we do. We got a little butter in this thing. And I have been uh, there where they have also used lard, which I'm not opposed to. <laughs> so you get that there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some coconut, fresh grated coconut. 
And we're going to add that coconut in, in there. And we're going to add some raisins in there. And some brown sugar in there. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work that in that butter, in that sugar, and it's going to start caramelizing a little bit. Now, once that happens, you get a nice toast going on with that coconut. Now we're going to uh, really flavor it up. So we're going to add a little vanilla to that. And believe it or not, we're going to add a little ground allspice and some cinnamon. Some grated rind of the lime, pinch of salt, and some fresh ginger grated. Oh, yeah, man. So now, can you smell that already? Can you smell that? how that's, how that's kind of getting toasty like that already? Now, you let that happen for a while, getting that cinnamon and all the spices mixed up with that. And then basically the next step is they have this very unique sweet potato, unlike the ones in Louisiana that are yeah, uh, real orange, right? Or what people think is a yam. In the Caribbean, they have this sweet potato that's a white sweet potato. And I peeled it, and it's, look, it's hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that can hurt somebody. <laughs> You ought to try grating it. Oh, yeah, it's a challenge because it's so tuberous, you know? Anyhow, have you ever had these white sweet potatoes? Once or twice. Okay. They're great. Well, they have this incredible starch, Doc, and so what we're going to do is now, once this gets all happy in here, and it's looking pretty happy, the thing that you do now is we take this grated sweet potato, and we add that in there now, you know, things that look like mush sometimes taste really good. You know? I said mush. Now, the other thing that they'll add in there is if they got a real ripe plantain or just a good banana. So we'll put a banana in here. Now, you mash all of this in together, folks. That banana, the sweet potato, you just keep stirring it, mashing it like that, getting real, real happy. And then, in about 15 minutes, how happy it is, it looks like that. Okay? It's really worked in now, the color, etc. And now to that, see that? See the color of that? The sugar and all of that? All right, now to that, what we do is we're going to add coconut milk. And a little bit of cream. And a little bit of milk. And then we're just going to sort of mix this all together in here. And we're going to let this cook out. And then generally what they'll do is they'll pour this into a buttered casserole pan. And they'll bake it. And, uh, oh, man, you want to talk about yummy. Especially after, you know, that's the thing about New Orleans. It's the thing about the Caribbean. Is the weather is pretty much the same. It's very hot, very humid, good part of the year. When you get into those very hot climates, the food tends to be a little spicier. And the desserts tend to be a little sweeter. It's sort of like the little balance there. All right. We got Caribbean beans and rice. New Orleans red beans and rice, and an awesome Haitian sweet potato pie, or something like that. And I'll show you what it all looks like when we come back. Stick around. Rock Gibbs.
Gibbs and the Emma Live Band. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we've been cooking from the uh, New Orleans Caribbean connection tonight. Hey, y'all having a good time so far? All right, we're in the home stretch now. So, uh, that sweet potato pie, once you added the milk, the coconut milk, and the cream, once it starts cooking like this, folks, then what you want to do is basically put it in a buttered casserole like this. And then you're going to have the oven on about 350 degrees. And you're going to bake it for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven and how it sets. So as I said earlier, it doesn't really look fantastic, but you ought to smell it and you ought to taste it. It's just unbelievable. And uh, if you want to uh, get any of the Caribbean connection or the Creole connection tonight, you just can go on at www.foodnetwork.com over to the Emerald page. <laughs> and uh, we'll be there. Now, just smooth it out. I like to, because of the moisture, I like to uh, basically cover it with uh, a little aluminum foil. And um, like I said, 30 to 40 minutes, 350 degrees. I have one back there. Now we're going to go over to the beans. During the commercial break, I um, checked out the Caribbean beans and rice, tasted it. Oh, man, that's Scotch bonnet. Whew. <laughs> Maybe you should only have half. <laughs> but uh, I saw the moisture in there, and I cranked the heat up high for about 10 seconds. And then I turned it off. And it's been sitting here now for almost about four or five minutes, and it's ready. And the evaporation of the New Orleans red beans, it's definitely... <laughs> It is definitely happy. Oh, yeah, man. Let's get a look at that now. All right. Make sure, like I said, you want to hit that bottom every now and then. You don't want to scorch them. So uh, in New Orleans, we'll uh, get a little bit of rice. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh. So a little rice. And then we'll uh, come over for some beautiful red beans with the ham and the andouille sausage. Just kind of... Now, generally what we'll do is uh, we'll garnish a lot of our dishes with green onions. That raw green onion flavor is very, very good. And a little bit of parsley. And there's the New Orleans red beans and rice, folks. And then we'll come over for the Caribbean beans and rice. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, generally, down there, what they do is they'll offer you a hot sauce. But obviously, we won't be needing any of that tonight. Because I'm telling you, it is pretty spicy. I, it, I like it, but uh, it's got some heat to it. So there's the Caribbean beans and rice right there, folks. And as I said, about 30 or 40 minutes, want to cover it with foil. Let's have a look at what this guy looks like. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, it's very, very simple how they serve this. They don't really get any fancy uh, sauces or, you know, coolies or any of that stuff. It's basically just a good old sweet potato pie. Well, they call it pie. Watch this. So you turn that over. See the texture of that? But you got all of these, like, incredible flavors going on. And uh, 
What I like to do, just sort of make a little tunnel like this and just put a nice dollop of whipped cream in there, okay? A little dollop of whipped cream, a little bam, 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 bam! And a little mint like that. That simple, folks, a little sweet potato. Oh, yeah, baby. So, uh, a lot of similarities, huh? A lot of great flavors, a lot of bold flavors, delicious flavors. Hey, I'm Emeril Lugasi. I want to thank you for joining me. See you next time, folks. Yeah.